Hello, welcome back. This video we're going to look at how to sketch reflected waves given the incoming or incident waves as shown below. So our blue lines here represent the crests of some incoming waves. They're traveling from the lower left up at an angle towards the right. The red block represents our barrier upon which these waves are going to bounce or reflect off of. And what we want to do is draw our reflected waves according to our rules. Now there really is only one rule with reflection and it's as simple as saying the angle of incidence must equal the angle of reflection. Let's put that at the side of the page to remind us. So all we're saying is that the angle of incidence or theta i has to equal the angle of reflection. The first thing we have to do is determine the direction of the incoming waves. Now they're moving from the lower left along a path as shown by my hand towards the barrier sort of up at an angle. Now the direction of these waves is always 90 degrees to these crests. Each of these individual crests are going to stay along the same parallel route, but they're going to be moving along my hand. So I'm going to draw an arrow that shows the direction of that incoming wave. So the red arrow shows the direction of my incoming wave, and the only rule you have to follow is you have to make sure that the direction is 90 degrees to the actual wave crest. So little 90 degrees right in there. Now right where that direction arrow strikes the boundary you want to construct a normal line. And remember a normal line is an imaginary line that's always 90 degrees to the barrier at that point. I'm going to put it in a dotted line that is green. Now I've drawn my normal line as my dotted green line but the one thing you have to remember is that it has to be 90 degrees to the barrier. So there's a 90 degree angle that exists right in here. So that's our second 90. The next thing we want to draw is the reflected wave direction. The incident direction is given by that incoming red line. So our red arrow is our incident direction. We want to draw the corresponding red arrow upon reflection. And here's our rule. Angle of incidence has to equal angle of reflection, but they're measured with respect to that normal line. So our angle of incidence is going to be between my red arrow and my dotted green line, and that has to be equivalent to my angle of reflection. So let's do that next. So you can see I've labeled my angle of incidence and drawn in my angle of reflection, and it's true that my angle of incidence is equivalent to my angle of reflection. So if I label my angle of reflection with the normal, it's equivalent to my angle of incidence. So if you had a protractor and measured those two angles, they should be identical. Now the last thing we want to do is draw in the wave crests, the outgoing wave crests. So our blue lines are going to ultimately bounce off this barrier and follow this reflected line here, this reflected arrow direction. So all we got to do is draw in our blue lines and just keep in mind they've got to now be 90 degrees to this arrow. Let's do that now. So I've drawn in my reflected wave crest, the blue lines, and they're 90 degrees to the reflected direction. So we've got a 90 right here and a 90 right here. One last thing to notice is that the wavelength does not change as we're not changing mediums. Um, if you don't change mediums, the velocity stays constant. And since the frequency is constant, in other words, if four waves arrive at this point per second, then four have to come off per second. That means the wavelength has to stay constant. So the only thing that changes upon reflection is the direction. The wavelength is the same, the frequency is the same, the velocity is the same. Let's summarize that on the right in a table. Not only is the angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection, our velocities are the same because we haven't changed the mediums, our wavelengths are the same, and our frequencies are the same. 